<laughs> Shall we? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Sure. So, um, I just uh, got introduced. Uh, we are Octobush. Uh, we are an SFS marketing platform uh, since 2005. Uh, we push the SMS marketing campaigns of more than 1,800 companies across France, mostly. But we are now expanding to the UK and Spain uh, on a mission to be the mobile marketing solution for Europe. So, why are we doing this, um, this webinar? Um, well, with the, with the coronavirus outbreak, uh, we started to have a lot of problems with uh, managing, uh, taking decision, making decisions and um, figuring out what else to do and making plans and everything got a bit like uh, crazy for us. We had like uh, to change a lot of plans. So we, we started talking with other startups and we figured out that we were all having the same problems and all the same questions. So that's why we started um, two weeks ago with another talk by our CEO, um, Jean-Claude Cohen. And then we invited uh, you two uh, to let us know, um, to, yeah, to know better uh, from experienced people and professionals, uh, what else to do, how can we figure out our plans, um, and how can we make wise decisions with all the stress that we are uh, like currently on, like most of the people, right? From every, uh, every industry. So that's how, that's why I invited you, to, we invited you to, and thanks for joining us. Uh, so I'm going to introduce you. Uh, we have uh, Karen Gul. Gulburian, is that Good right? Enough. Good morning, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, thank you for joining. Um, so, architect, architect of ecosystem, strategic advisor and investor, founder of Strategic Value Ventures in San Francisco, and key advisor of the University of California Berkeley Skydeck. Right? That's okay. right. Great. So, thanks for joining us today. And then Hervé Cuvillier. Is that? Yep. Okay. Yep. So you're joining us from France. Um, yep. Our, our major, uh, our clients are mostly from there. Uh, so you are uh, is managing partner at ID4 Ventures, founder of Lead yep. Ventures Europe in 2016. Yep. And um, 15 million fund and angel investor since 2010, right? 2010. Yep. And now you're founder of Lead Ventures Europe and co-founder and former CEO of Dinawi, yep. a digital media company in the Middle East sold to Webedia in 2014. Exactly. Yep. Very, very strong career. So <laughs> I, I want to, I have a lot of questions for you. Go ahead. Um, so, um, if you want to start uh, with, um, answering this very briefly, uh, what is a VC and what's the role in a startup? Oh, uh, first and foremost, we invest money. More importantly, is a uh, um, team of ID uh, former um, entrepreneur. Um, we try to, uh, we, we don't, we don't like the term hands on, uh, we're not hands on, it's the entrepreneur we need to be hands on, but try to uh, bring them experience. I was explained that it's, um, two kinds of things to do in the startups. There is a basic mistake we all do, and we try to add them, avoid them. And there is the original mistakes, which is when you try to do something new that nobody has done before, um, and uh, there is no experience on that front. So we try to help them avoid the, as maximum the basic mistakes on fundraising, development, hiring, all those kind of stuff. It's more knowledge transfer, if I can put it that way. Okay, great. 
Um, so you're kind of in a get and throw. A sort of what, sorry? You are kind of in a guidance role for yep. this. Definitely. Or at least advise guidance. If, if they take the advice, good for them. Uh, but sometimes they don't take it. And I like when they don't take everything. It's, I like the entrepreneur who have their own opinion and then taking the advice from a lot of people and then making their decision. Yes, sure. I mean, the entrepreneur is the one that is leading the company, right? So it's, it's a good place. Yeah, exactly. And to get more on the topic, I would like to ask, um, what is a crisis? I mean, how do you define a crisis and what types of crises there are? Is that for me or for Karen? Oh, it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I think the, the essence of a crisis is the, um, the fact it's, it's unplanned. Uh, um, so if you look at the beginning of 2020, uh, it was supposed to be a nice ride, election, uh, um, everybody wanted to uh, be smooth on the, on the, on the stock markets. Uh, I think nobody was planning to, um, to get that kind of uh, 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 crisis uh, or unexpected crisis. Um, and this is something you haven't planned. So, so uh, game is how fast and how uh, rightful you you readjust to a new reality, um, and that's the essence of the crisis. Uh, and for me, if you ask me, it's a crisis closer to what we have come, uh, we have known in uh, in two thousand with the uh, uh, bubble, internet bubble, than the two thousand crisis. Mm -hmm. And Karen, have you, uh, you, I spoke earlier with you when I invited you to this, um, to this webinar and you told me you, this is not the first crisis you've been through. That's right. So, in, I mean, when we're talking about the crisis, it's really a uh, different thing for different people. I mean, it could be essentially crisis on a daily basis and uh, some people call it like a fire drills, for example, within the company. So, and I agree with her, it's pretty much unexpected, something which is not typically you expect or plan for the day, for the life, uh, for the year, et cetera. Uh, but there are major crises which are beyond just what in you, in kind of your local environment, right? So major or global crises. And uh, in my particular, case yeah i lived through uh, many i would say crises uh, from late 80s through the 90s and we're talking about natural disasters we're talking about i mean i was born in armenia at the time soviet union so the collapse of the entire country collapse of the economy uh, i mean uh, war natural disaster like in 88 uh, in Armenia, which swept the entire city. So living through these crises, and it's, uh, you see just kind of extremes, extremes which really put a different perspective in terms of like what we, um, like how we even consider things, right? When things are good, great, we are uh, used to different aspects of life we take for granted. Crisis, crisis on a different side gives us, uh, in my opinion, a great perspective. What is really the basics? What are the essentials? What are the most important things we need to really care about? What is really uh, important? Because in the case of crisis, uh, our nature as a humans, right? we are setting ourselves to, I mean, we going back to our really the most primitive emotions, which are, or basic emotions, which are self-preservation, the fear, self-preservation, and pretty much all the actions of the people in that environment, in the crisis environment, will be driven by those emotions. What is the most important for me? How can I survive this? So. This is pretty much hardwired by the nature. 
and that's changing the entire paradigm how we think about uh, living, working, building, creating through the crisis. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. And just uh, following this, uh, this thing that you were saying about uh, going to the primitive, uh, a primitivity as humans, um, I wanted to ask you, what have you both learned from uh, crisis in general? I mean, it can be like from, what are you learning now from this crisis in particular with the coronavirus outbreak? Or it can be from a different crisis, but um, as, as human beings, how, what, what have you learned from them? If you wanna start. Uh, yeah. So one thing for me, uh, what I learned uh, first, aspect is the crisis starts in your head. I mean, you can leave. So unless you realize there is a crisis, unless it hits you as a crisis, right? Mm -hmm. Many people start from the, I mean, even within uh, environment where things are falling apart, a lot of changes happening, like in real time, unless you realize you're in denial mode, this is not happening, this cannot be, right, right, or something of this kind. So once it hits you, you realize, first thing is realization there is a crisis. Yeah. Right, so, and that really, what's important at that point is really be agile and flexible and adaptable. So going back to the primitive emotions, like how we hardwired, right? And from that standpoint, what do I need to do? Start thinking from the bare essentials, like what do we need to do to go through this for the next two months, three months, right? And unless, and it starts with you, as I mentioned, unless you have some, I would say, peace of mind, understanding in your head that kind of things are, whatever is in your control, a lot of things are outside of your control and you cannot really change them. And just worrying about things which are outside of your control will not make you calm, will not make you uh, think straight, will not uh, essentially help you to go through this process. On the other side, there are things which are in your control. Like how can you prepare and adapt to the new realities, right? So what do you need for that? Starting from like, taking care of you personally, or your family, food, right, safety. These are very essential things. And going on, like how can I take care of my company? How can I start helping my teams, right? So going from this basic essentials. But at the end of the day, crisis is a great exercise. If you live through the crises, it makes you resilient. It makes you just kind of think, put things in perspective. And at the end of the day, it helps you to go through this, right? It's like, if it's your first crisis, everything is in front of your eyes. You cannot see anything beyond that. It just, you start your day, coronavirus, you go through the day, you hear coronavirus, et cetera, et cetera. So at the end of the day, you hear nothing but coronavirus and it seems like the entire world is falling apart. So once you put that in a perspective of things, like it's not the only thing which is going on. Look around, observe, life is still going on. There are a lot of changes happening. So it helps you just to put things in perspective and put the priorities. Mm -hmm. And um, following this uh, line of, uh, of thought, um, if, you are, if you have uh, the um, things right in front of you, how could you uh, figure out a, a plan to move forward with your business? Um, Hervé, could you answer that? I hope I can answer that. Yeah. Um, so, so just one thing on the crisis, and I, I forget it was kind of, uh, 
you know, there is two things. It's I'm, I'm a bit an optimistic. So the first thing you need to know it's uh, uh, when you have a crisis, eventually it will get better at some point. Uh, uh, so it's a question of survival. So uh, I'm sure, except the dinosaur, most of the human crisis we have through history, we, you, you had an afterlife or an after crisis, more, more precisely. But one thing you need to understand pretty quickly is it's never the same. So I mean, what, what you had before will not resume. And I think if I look at the entrepreneur, the people I'm talking to during that crisis is, you know, having that objective of hibernation, it's like, oh, it's going to pass. It's, it's two or three months of lockdown and, and then it's going to resume where we were. Uh, it won't. So uh, the minute you realize that you're in it, and, and I agree with Klein, is uh, the big difference between people is how fast you are you, um, uh, looking backward on, okay, I'm, I'm inside and I'm inside a crisis. What can I do and what I can do um, and focusing on it. So the advice on what to do on the on crisis, especially on crisis where you have absolutely no idea how long it will last. Um, it's a survival mode. Uh, I've explained for the past two to all the is when you um some pretty clear what you need to do. Uh, 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 um, and the faster you react, the faster you just to this environment, the, the, the higher chance of success that you have. Um, but just waiting for the crisis to pass, it's, um, I can give you most probably the output of it. You, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna fail. Because when, when the situation recovers, it's not the same paradigm. Things will have changed. Yes, I think uh, mostly we have changed. No, I think, it, I yeah, it's, it's in Chinese, I think, exactly. I think in, in Chinese and Mandarin, you have two idioms to the, uh, to, 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 for the world crisis. is danger and opportunity. Yes, and that's correct. That the combination of those two idioms that define crisis. And I keep on telling you that everyone, everyone that crisis, danger and opportunity. You need to be on alert for your survival and thinking how I'm going to get through it stronger because my competitor is going to fail or the market going to change and I'm going to take advantage of it. You need to be in those, what is complicated in the crisis, you need to be in those two states at the same time. Survival, optimist, survival, optimist. And you need to be able to combine both. If you can manage to do that, and exactly like Karen was explaining on controlling what you can control, you're in the right state of mind for me. Great. Um, do you want to As a company, and I would just add to this, and as a company, first you start with understanding, uh, I mean, you put aside, you pretty much throw away all the assumptions you had before the, this particular type of, especially this major crisis is, right? How you build your cash flow, how you build uh, your customer base, how you, um, you know, grow, what's your competitive landscape, all these assumptions which you had before, throw away. It's a new reality and you essentially starting from scratch. Start from the standpoint of understanding how much cash you have as a, even, uh, I mean, as a startup, right? Yeah, if you just getting into, if you in pre-revenue or you just starting to get revenue, or even if you're getting some clients, start understanding how long can you go through this with this particular pace, right? What is straight down to the point of what is really basic and uh, most essential things you need to go through this? Definitely no parties, nothing of this kind, which are you just focus on what do I need to kind of survive this? Which team, I mean, how, how many people I need to, uh, for this? How can I uh, retain, right? 
yeah. these people. And uh, if you have kind of essentially little funding for this, now reframe your problems. Put this, okay, I need to do this and I need funding. So in, before in the booming environment, everyone were going after investors, after like VCs. First, VC is the most expensive uh, money you can raise. But, you know, VC gives you a lot of uh, other aspects, good VCs or good investors. They yes, give you... Advisory. Right. They give you uh, the value, which is beyond just the money. And that's the, I think, in my opinion, is one of the key essential things for the startup, especially on the acceleration mode. Now, uh, during the, the crisis, many people are, many businesses, including VCs and investors, are thinking about their own interests, right? And this is probably not the best time right now to raise. Having said that, for the funding, Reframe the question, how do I get the funding? In the time of crisis, especially in, uh, let's say, US and Europe, there is opportunity right now to raise funding through debt instruments. Debt instruments means, you know, zero or a very uh, kind of reduced rate loans with very uh, streamlined or kind of very favorable terms, mm -hmm. right? Something which will allow you, if you anticipate this is going to be like several months or, you know, a period of time after which there will be a growth because after every crisis, there is kind of end of the crisis at the end of the day. Yeah. How can you start thinking about how you as a company position yourself in this marketplace? Because every, uh, all your competitors, I mean, not everyone will survive. Some will go out of business, some will lose uh, customers, etc. What will make you, after all these crises, make you stronger, better yeah. uh, position to take advantage of the market? Yes, I have uh, recently. I I was watching a, a TV show. And they said something very interesting that, that uh, I just remember and it said like something like um, never uh, let go of crisis uh, without taking advantage of it. And um, what I was thinking of was um, about what you said, uh, Arve, about uh, the, the double meaning of the, the word crisis in Chinese. And um, what would be, uh, in, in your perspectives, uh, what are the opportunities that we have like right now in this scenario? Like, are we expecting, I mean, we have been um, seeing some um, companies uh, thrive and grow, like everything related to remote work and uh, with uh, communications and solutions for remote companies. For instance, Zoom, and I want to know if you can um, just pinpoint some opportunities that maybe we are missing that but are important that will be a successful, um, yes, a su successful industries in, in in this time. That's a billion dollar question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, That's look, why I ask. <laughs> um, the, the, the way uh, um, I think it's the, the obvious is of course I, I think it's, it's not only the opportunity you have people like telemedicine uh, 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 who have gained years in adoption in their adoption curves uh, uh, so this crisis will accelerate phenomena that was in progress but were about to become mainstream two, three, five years down the road that's going to become much sooner. It's a bit early to see the long-term effect of, of you know, what's going to come out of it. Uh, for sure, the obvious are telemedicine, the cloud-based things. A lot of companies have realized that they are not able to operate uh, uh, in a disrupt environment. I think that the key output for me is 
uh, and the way I explain it to either my investors or, or startup or the startup we look at, it's the key fact that it happened. You know, I was joking at the board in, in, in the company who was working with hospitalities. And we had three months ago the budget discussion, they were about to do a 3x this year again in dozens of millions of dollars, uh, a multiple of dozens of millions of dollars. And then suddenly we were like, if we add that scenario of what happened if you entire industry in the four country you are in are closed at 100%. Everybody will have laughed in the room. Mm -hmm. It was not even a possible scenario. It was not even on the map on the stretch stage stretch says we were doing. So I think the first output of that crisis is the insinkable can happen. And so uh, uh, um, a lot of pressure on CIOs, CTOs uh, will come from their board, from, from, their, from, from their CEO on how we get more prepared for this kind of thing. Because I think if you, if you do a survey around, around you, people strongly believe now that it will happen again it become a new thing in our life. And we all certain that in the next 10 years or the next 20 years, it will happen again. So people will prepare differently. And then I think what happened is action very quickly. Uh, depending on the US or in the China, you have a different period of your lockdown. Uh, um, but when you're in your third week, people was a bit disoriented and you lack, you really to, I need to do stuff. Now people start to adjust to that new reality. And the business resume, even if it's shaky, but we're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm closing deals, I'm doing stuff. Yes, it's maybe 25% of what I used to do, but it's possible to close a deal via Zoom. It's possible to uh, do a collaboration, a real collaboration via, uh, distantly. Those kind of things will stay. I'm not saying company will move from zero to one, but it was, it, it will be somewhere in the middle. It's gonna be a mix. So the opportunity, it's more about how the thing gonna rebalance, how people gonna, what you were saying, and people look at their lives and it's like, what I'm, I was doing before that was not important to me. Uh, what, what I want to change in the way I'm working, what I want to change the way I'm living and uh, consuming, you know, it, I don't think uh, we have looked, uh, there is two things we're looking at for the moment is, do we have comparables? And uh, if you look at China, if you look at the one who are a bit right of the curve, how is people are, are getting back to their life? And one indicator I really like in China is the, um, uh, the traffic uh, in the subway in, in, in Beijing and, and Shanghai. Uh, because, that the after for town, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, and basically, even if the confinement and uh, the lockdown is done, uh, they're passed through that, everything is reopening, they are still at 25% in terms of traffic and footfall they had before the crisis. People are still, are still scared, they are still asking a lot of questions is that safe for me to resume work? Fear is a real. You know, will remain for quite some time. And also, companies are realizing that they were doing stuff on site that now they can they can uh, they can do uh, distantly. So the way of working will change. For me, it's it's uh, you know it's uh, something around a billion people who have been locked down. If you add China now, it's going to be a 2.4. China, uh, uh, India is coming. So you're going to have half of the planet that has been locked down. And for home, and if you look at the TV show in the US, they're shooting for home. Uh, that it, all this was not thinkable like two months ago. So we try to, you know, to, to play with those things and, and try to see what can be the early trends, but it's a bit early to tell, to be honest. But my my view is that part, some part of that lockdown will stay in the way we, we're interacting, in the way we, we're working. Wow. Yeah, I, um, I, th I was thinking that um, 
I was also thinking that little shifts uh, will be the, um, the key for adapting and uh, everything you said about opportunities. Uh, maybe you have like some, uh, some little things that change for you, but then you come up with very big ideas from that shift. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's maybe more, um, more of that little changes that we are experiencing right now that have a totally different shift of, uh, of what you're doing as a company. Um, but yeah, and uh, Karen, if you have something to add to this. Yeah, so going back to, again, essentials, right? <clears throat> Let's understand and what helps me at least uh, in this whole environment, anything which is changing, I'm trying to visualize how this will play out. So close your eyes and just try to visualize. So one additional aspect of what's happening during these um, uh, times of crisis is, right? So another essential aspect of the humankind, regardless where you are, right? We as humans are hardwired to be in connection with someone. We not single, we not living alone. We are hardwired to live with community, within a community to communicate, right? Yeah. So social distancing, which we have right now in many countries across the globe, does, it's all about physical distance. No one prevented from kind of interacting. So, and more important, it, the format, the means are changing, but the essence, we still need the communication. So let's visualize how the things are changing. And it's becoming through the phone, it's becoming video. So technology is definitely expanding and creating new opportunities in this environment. Why this is so important, especially for startups? Because Regardless what environment you're in, I mean, a crisis or non-crisis, and especially during the crisis, you need environment of support. What, what that means, you need people who can guide you if they had some experience with this or they have perspective. So this is where uh, if you have great advisors, this is or people, mentors who can drive or you know, navigate, guide you through this process. That's number one. Environment of support means if you create both um, similar minded or people who in companies, I mean, the startups, you have startup community. You, this is really an uh, opportunity during the crisis for people and companies to come together. And really uh, no one as a kind of single mind can drive or go through the crisis we are as humans need support and kind of go as a community. So in this environment, it's very important to be constantly in uh, coordination and communication, right? Reach out, ask for help. And um, this is time to show your vulnerability. If you have doubts, if you have fear, if you uh, somewhere you thinking just let it out. I mean, let people know what's going on, right? Hmm. More likely than not, there are more people of in your situation, in your shoes. And let's have collective wisdom. What people are good, not as a single, but as a collective wisdom, we are usually great in terms of, like there are a number of stories in, uh, I mean, we're not going to that, but collective wisdom of humankind, of uh, community, this is what really drives this opportunity to go through the crisis with the least, I would say, uh, damage, or more importantly, how to turn these down times, crisis times, into new opportunities. So, um, as you were saying about approaching this as a community, um, are you also approaching this uh, crisis with your startups uh, from as a VC, as VCs, both of you? Are you approaching this, uh, the response as a community with your, um, with the startups that you, you form part of? 
or you are just like advising each each of them uh, separately? Because I think that it would be kind of interesting if you had like a, um, a not a single response, but uh, a unified response or, or some um, comp a way to to accompany the the startups that you are advising. So, what we're trying to do first is we we have moved from a, a from a, a, let's say quarterly monthly interaction with the startups where you know by weekly we 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 interact much more because uh, uh, the first thing we know is we don't know for the moment we don't know how long it's going to be we don't know how, how fast it's going to recover. Uh, uh, and um, and so what we're trying to do is discussing with you know again nobody knows so what you can do is triangulate discuss with a lot of people seeing their opinion we we have investment in in, in, in the Silicon Valley we're in Europe uh, I was just one we have one in Africa uh, where We have some technical difficulties, seems like. Yes. <laughs> so like... let me uh, go over this uh, while we get uh, kind of fix the technical. So from my standpoint, personal standpoint, I start my journey as an investor and in, uh, strategic advisor for companies many years ago from the premise of like, I want to, I mean, my, unless I have something of value to provide to the teams, to the companies, to the startups, I'm not investing, I'm not getting engaged with these companies, right? So in engagement, regardless, even outside of the crisis mode was like how uh, really being providing this environment of support and it can be different things. It could be weekly, uh, you know, uh, sync up calls, it, could be helping with uh, expos, providing webinars, meeting periodically, just for kind of strategic and et cetera. So providing any type of support, right? And especially during the crisis, because again, no one knows it all, right? And this environment allows in constant communication, provide, it's a learning opportunity for me as well. I mean. This is first and foremost, I mean, selfishly, I'm learning a lot by interacting with a number of uh, startups that with, because everyone is going through different journeys. And this is what I consider the collective wisdom. Having this type of experiences, hands-on experiences, allows us to build the step which, or platform which you can use going forward to be more resilient and stronger and more successful. Right. So another opportunity, I mean, uh, way back, uh, I partnered with uh, UC Berkeley Skydeck Accelerator, and it was very successful uh, partnerships, my part. And this is very unique environment as an accelerator. It's quite different, especially for global founders. It's a big community and big community, not only from the standpoint of startups, but also advisors and much bigger environment of where you can really tap into the knowledge or uh, experience, which is kind of throughout the entire Silicon Valley in the US and even global. I mean, it's just a very unique environment, right? That's great. Um, you were, you were, we had like some technical issues. <laughs> can yeah. you say, yes. Um, and you were saying that you uh, were discussing a lot with uh, with other people. So I wanted to know if you you meant uh, are you kind of talking in, with other VCs also? Yeah. So 
discuss a lot with other VCs, uh, with even other startups, so they are not even portfolio, uh, with OLPs, we, we, the particularity of ID4 is we have a, it's almost 100% family offices as LPs. So there are a lot of exposure on the market as well. So, you know, nobody has the truth. It's, it, it's try, we try to understand two things. It, it's getting someone's perspective and, and, and perspective wisdom is exactly what we try to do. It's, and the second thing is also trying to understand how people react because you have also that kind of self-fulfilling prophecy when everybody start to say, oh, three or four years going to be, uh, you know, the Great Depression again. You know that people are going to start to it so I think uh, uh, um, capos, the, the data points is super important for us. Um, and this is more on the macro view and, and on the entrepreneur side, we are more into, uh, um, you know, uh, taking more maybe harsher decision fast. Uh, um, all the nice to have project, the things you know that you're a bit complacent, uh, but when it was fine, it was okay. All that kind of things need to go away very fast. The second thing is, what else can you do? Uh, yeah, it's frozen. <laughs> Okay. Are you still with me? <laughs> okay. Are you are you still there? Yeah, there are definitely some technical issues. Uh, um, Okay. So let me let me give you some. Um, uh, uh, I mean, we're talking about really. Uh, I don't want this to be abstract, but a more practical conversation. So, I want to give you one example, right? Like how uh, what we discussed is being reactive is uh, one way. Another thing is kind of being or building your capabilities proactively. I know we're in the crisis mode, but this is kind of bigger opportunity to start kind of developing or anticipating your next, uh, I guess, opportunities or let's call it crises for the future. Uh, going back to the point of how this environment support the environment, right? Builds uh, kind of... Uh, provides success and how the crisis could be an opportunity as well. So one of my, um, I mean, one of my portfolio companies, uh, early companies who went through Skydeck, uh, it's called CRISP with K, CRISP.ai. Hi, yes, we know about that. All right, so um, CRISP is a company which uh, started with the vision of, or idea uh, to remove the background noise, echoes and background noise, wherever you are. So during these conversations, um, like we have right now, how can you have conference calls, etc., to collaborate with your team, regardless where you are? Essentially, the idea was like, if you're remote, if you're at the airport or noisy restaurant, and you want to have a conversation with your team, no one will even uh, have clue that you're not in the comfort of your room or your office, right? So that was the funny part. And, you know, fast forward, I mean, team over the years, uh, over the last two years, been building not only technical, but uh, capabilities of community building of, uh, on the global scale, right? And this crisis really helped just not only to reinforce, but really um, take to the stratosphere, the whole kind of vision that this is uh, nowadays, the environment is changing. We are connecting, we're communicating even more and it's going to be virtual. And it's so important to have these tools available like noise cancellation, right? Uh, 
Yeah. They're, uh, now their stats to the roof. I mean, they have seven, eight times more traffic and interest from the companies. They've been featured by uh, Forbes as uh, one of the top five essential tools along with Zoom, uh, Google Doc, and uh, Slack. So just consider how this can really take you to a different, totally different level. Crisis is, uh, yes, it's crisis for many people. It's a negative connotation and it's very serious environment. I don't want to diminish this. At the same time, from the business standpoint, there are opportunities which you can see, which you never anticipated. Uncertainty is not the risk. Uncertainty, the word, has upside. And this is exactly one example where there is a huge upside for this type of uncertainty. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, a lot of opportunities come up from, from this type of, of uh, crisis. Um, so um, what I, this is like uh, to finish, I wanted to ask you um, if VCs are still operating, if they are actively looking for opportunities and um, how could, should startups uh, keep looking for them or should they just um, stick around and wait for a bit till all the, of, all of this uh, passes and what are your your perspectives? Um, I think what, one exercise we do a lot with our company is try to understand the assets they obtain or, or relationship with clients what, what else they can do with it how can they flow to other industries? Uh, can we turn around how fast without investment? Um, the thing is to try to be a, either you're on the and, and that crisis, you know, provide you a boost because suddenly you get a faster adoption or so, oh, you're on the wrong side of the fence and, and, and your business is completely disrupted because you were in advertising or whatever. Um, you need to focus on how I maintain, you know, even a motivation for the team, a story, I can still grab market share on maybe other things. So uh, uh, that company in hospitality we have in two weeks, they started to understand they can relocate some of their resources to retail, medical, uh, even agriculture. And they started to develop new verticals where they were less disrupted than their key vertical. And now they regain uh, traction on those articles and the assumption we have is they're gonna most probably get out of that crisis stronger because they're gonna have a better diversification of the revenue this is gonna this is gonna last so you know once again hibernation is not an option is uh, not of course you know just running away from from where you are but trying to understand how i can make more uh, in terms of revenue, I can be more um, frugal on my expenses and, and you know, being as in shape as possible when it's restarting. And we don't know how to start. I think the only thing is not soon. It won't be a, a, a v shaped kind of crisis. Everybody was expecting this for the moment, but the lockdown is, is, is lasting long. And we, I don't see that simply anymore. So it's going to get some time. Yes. So we should, yes, of course, uh, we should keep moving and doing things. We cannot like. But, you know, it's, 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 it's also being more uh, opportunistic. Uh, uh, we have company who are seeing licenses in, 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 in um, dozens of thousands of dollars to a hundred of thousands of dollars and you're like, okay, how can you grab clients with five thousand dollars? Grab clients and then you upset them next year in two years, but do something, you know. Uh, you, you need to adapt and, 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 and include the environment you're in. It's signing a, a license deal uh, in a hundred of uh, thousands of dollars via Zoom. I'm not sure we're there yet, but maybe getting that client will 
planning to get even for 10K a year, it's 10K and it's a client. You're reassuring your investor, you're reassuring your team, your clients. Even if it doesn't grow as fast as you want or as straight, let keep going. Sure. Yeah, so in terms of um, if uh, raising funds was difficult before, it's going to be multiple times more difficult because, again, it's about uh, people and VCs uh, and investors are going to consider their own options and interests. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's going to be much harder. Now, from the standpoint of startup, again, if, uh, let's reframe the question, right? Let's reframe the problem. What do I need to, you know, uh, I need funding. So where can I get some funding for this? And funding, again, could be in different forms and shapes. One thing uh, it's important to differentiate, first of all, when you're looking at investors, there are angel investors and uh, VCs mindset of these people are quite different first and foremost right angel investors are investing their own money while vcs are investing some uh, someone else money their lps right so it also shapes the kind of thought process and uh, uh, outlook uh, perspective etc so a lot of things needs to be accounted again uh, having said that uh, if you approach uh, angel investors who are really believe in what you do and uh, they consider this is actually a great opportunity, especially during this time. Uh, I mean, I'm double down myself in terms of like providing support to my teams and teams who uh, I work with because they will, you know, come out of this crisis even stronger. So. As an investor, angel investor, I want to provide them support and more support because they are going to be stronger. If the startup is looking for funding, this is another opportunity to be more flexible and consider all options available at this point. And those options are not only investors. Those are the government, those are you know, banks or you know, stimulus packages loans i mean just consider so many different things in at the end of the day community crowdfunding i mean just don't uh, don't develop tunnel vision the the critical piece one thing which uh, i want our startups or whoever is listening to this to develop during the crisis mode is avoid tunnel vision yeah. because you need to be as flexible and as broad in terms of your perspective and how you look at a resolution of every or solution uh, much broader in much uh, kind of agile. Yes, yes, it's time to think out of the box. <laughs> <You're Well>. saying... <laughs> there is <Yeah>. no box. <laughs> um, yeah, so Even just- the box is gone. <laughs> Yeah, what? there is an uh, open field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll so. make it in this open field. Yeah, you're right. Um, so I just, uh, I just wanted to read um, a comment that we had in the Q&A section. And it says, uh, enjoying that talk a lot. Guys, your insights are really interesting. So perhaps for you. And Thank then you. we have a question. And it says, um, talking around, people are afraid to restart traveling going to the restaurants and even re-becoming social. What, is, uh, what if we enter a new work increasing, oh, wait, wait a second. Uh, what if we enter a new work increasing digital services in a way that could change our environment? Retail, for instance, don't you think retail is going to be really affected on a permanent basis? So, I don't know who feels the most uh, yeah. confident to answer this. Uh, look, they, they will be changing. I, I think everybody came to the realization that, uh, you know, uh, yes, there is viruses. Yes, when, when you do social interacting, you're exchanging uh, various bacteria, whatever. Um, 
but I think also the essence of uh, the humans are, um, you know, for, for the same reason you have bubbles on the market, people tend to forget, or, or it's a question on how distant those episodes can happen. Uh, if you're looking at five years down the road, 10 years down the road, and nothing will happen, you can be really sure that everybody's going to resume, you know, to the normal life if you take the uh, plague, Spanish flu, uh, we, we're still going to restaurants and we had those pandemics before. Um, will it resume, will it leave some trace or, or, or change of behavior? Yes, for sure, in the, in the coming few years, people will remember, my, you know, I have kids, uh, it's an experience for them as well. It's, it's something that's gonna become, you know, uh, uh, collective uh, 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 history. Um, so yes, we're most probably going to be more conscious about what we do, how we do it. Will we stop social interaction? No, as Karen was saying, it's part of us. It's where we are hardwired with, gener with, with social interaction. Uh, um, and, and this will resume. Uh, maybe the unnecessary risk or unnecessary exchange of, you know, you have a lot of uh, projection movies where people are not touching anymore, et cetera, et cetera. I think it will pass, the, the way, but a bit more cautious. In my opinion, things are, and it's good, I mean, things are changing because once you strip down to essentials, you now start kind of looking at innovation and through a life, you're going to, I mean, and also businesses will be adapting to this through the kind of changes which impact it through, I mean, once we out of this. So there will be definitely a lot of changes in terms of like how we uh, do business, what we do, what will be unchanged. Again, going back to kind of fundamentals, the human interaction is something we crave. So it will not go away. In one aspect, uh, regardless uh, how much you're going to buy from online retailers, which will be delivered to you, you still want interaction. Many times I go to a store not to buy something necessarily, uh, but to have this interaction with uh, you know, people who sell and have uh, a little bit this. Uh, I mean, it, it provides a different type of environment and uh, satisfaction, right? Plus, I want to support local businesses. There are a lot of things which may not be available online, and that is the handcraft, something which we create specifically for you. This is the period of time where we becoming more individualistic in terms of like who we are, realization, our individual aspect. And we want something very special, especially this new generation. They want the very individual, I mean, individualistic. So uh, yes, the technology will change, the businesses will change, but let's visualize how this will play out in the standpoint of like, how are we going to interact? It, the aspect is still gonna be there. Yes, that's true. It's the essence of, human beings <laughs> you're right um and we have a, one last observation that i think i think is very very accurate uh to everything that, that we've said and to wrap up um the interview and it says uh, it is an open field let's do what entrepreneurs do innovate exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> so exactly. it's it's uh... Yes. No, it's exactly the right mood. It's, you know, being on the earth of uh, what new opportunity is going to come out of that crisis. I, I, I think that's the, the right uh, state of mind. I mean, and innovation comes in different shapes and forms, right? And innovation could be, as, I mean, as history shows, something which we bring from the past, something of my time my generation which we saw like audio cassettes and kind of like vinyls etc which we thought gun 
it's coming back. It's a new statement, it's new fashion, it's new way. For example, for, I mean, for my kids, I'm looking at like how they take and uh, reinvent what we thought is gone completely. Now, I mean, they buying those uh, artifacts and they creating a new way or they creating a new way of li living with these artifacts. I mean, the music, the kind of stuff, which again, it's, it's a kind of innovation sometimes. It's something old, which we bring to the new world, yes. new reality. <laughs> For sure. Um, so, um, thank you so much for joining us and for giving us your time and your wisdom. Um, thanks a lot. You've been very much of help. And, uh, well, um, have a good crisis. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for having us and uh, everyone be safe in this environment and uh, innovate. This is a great opportunity again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.